And I remember listening to Sarah uh, Blanksley, um, you know, Spanx. Yes, yeah, Sarah Blanksley. And, and she changed my attitude about a lot of things. But she said, you know, I got into, and let's say it was Bloomingdale's, right? So I finally got Bloomingdale's to say yes to me. She didn't stop there. She then went and created media kits that, you know, and taught the people how to sell it. So she made sure that the products got sold. Some of us would just stop at, I got it into Bloomingdale's, done, check, let me go on to the next thing. But you become almost obsessive compulsive about saying, okay, now I got to make them successful. Now I got to make sure that they move my product so I stay in there forever because I'm just in there. It doesn't be doing any good. And if they all ship them all back, it doesn't do me any good. Welcome to the Stacking Habits Podcast with your hosts, David, Matthew, and Caleb. Our mission each week is to dig into the habits, rituals, and routines of guests who are living life to the fullest. But remember, knowledge without action is worthless. So be sure to take what you hear and put it into practice. Turn these words into works in your own life. Without further ado, let's dive in. So we had a pre-call before, uh, before the new year, so at the end of December. And it's really interesting. Things tend to pop up in life in, in multiples. And I guess it's once you're looking for it, it's like the red car effect. If you buy a red car, all of a sudden you start seeing red cars everywhere. And one of the things we talked about was rereading a book. And since our conversation, I've probably had that conversation with three or four other people. It's just sort of come up organically. And so we're going to talk about going deep uh, on anything. And obviously, you have a ton of books behind you. Matthew and I are booksellers. So if we start you know, leaning into our screens and trying to see what's back there, that, that's why uh, we're trying to see what kind of value we can extract from your bookshelf and flip back online, even though we're mostly out of that business. But why don't we back up just a step, Nick, and tell us a little bit uh, who you are. We talked about some of your experience there with Dan Kennedy. Um, would you consider yourself an entrepreneur, a marketer, a salesperson? Like where, where in the school of business would you sort of say that, that you lie? Yes, yes, and yes. Right. So I think all great entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs first and foremost, right? Looking for a different way to serve the marketplace, a different something you could bring to the marketplace to add value and profit from. Right. So that's the difference between an entrepreneur and a small businessman. Right. Small businessmen goes back to what we kind of talked about in our intro, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, right, where the entrepreneur is maybe on to five different things. And I'm not married to one different industry and always looking for what can I steal from other industries or where can I add value? So entrepreneurial first, I started as a sales person. Right. Uh, and, you know, carrying a bag cold calling out of a cubicle. Matthew, you know, I had a, I had a landline. You probably don't even know what that is, right? But just, you know, a phone attached, right? And I got really, in, in, you know, I got a headset, right? That was high tech. And, you know, started on the one card system, which was index cards before CRMs were even around. And, you know, you got to be in it. And so I just learned the art of sales, but also, you know, one of my mentors, which who was a phenomenal salesperson, and, and, you know, I was smart enough to go seek him out and he took me under his wing, but he says, we're marketers first, right? And so, you know, so then I became a student of marketing and it's a lot easier when you've got people predetermined and pre-educated to kind of work with you or at least know who you are or using lead flow to give you the confidence versus just cold calling all day and what we I call pounding rocks in the hot sun, right? You know, that's just hard work. But so yes, yes, and yes. And I think every business owner and entrepreneur has to be yes, yes, and yes. And where and one of the things that we talked about, Dan, and you know, he'll he gets it all the time. And I see it in my work here is business owners just get tired of selling. Right. They get tired of grinding out and selling every day uh, and they don't want to do it anymore. And so either they don't to the detriment of their business or they bring salespeople in, which is the smart thing to do. But then you have to set a process and system up so the salespeople will be successful. Uh, but as you see, all the books behind really are all sales and marketing books. As I was joking, Caleb, these are all what I like the call the good books. My wife calls the boring books, right? The fun books are in on the first floor, you know, so this is all sales and marketing. And then that floor down there uh, is, you know, thinking, right? So mindset thinking, we talked a little bit about some of those books and then you can't see them, but uh, all the Dan Kennedy stuff, because he 
put stuff in binders, right? You know, so, and Matthew has no idea what a binder is either, but you know, that, you know, that's over on the <laughs> other side. He's not that where young, Nick. He's not that young. He just looks younger. He lives in Colorado, right? He's, so oh, all no. the skiing and the sunshine, uh, you know, that he has. In, well, he's you know, retired. That, he moved down to Phoenix with all the snowbirds. Yeah. And he's got, he's got a green smoothie, right? So that's keeping yeah. him young too. That yeah. he's, uh, it's sip mod, so, but yeah, I think you got to be both. I think, and that's one of the things that we taught, right? And that's one of the mantras that I think everybody does disservice to of teaching small business owners and entrepreneurs that you're really the marketer of the business, right? You have to be the marketer of the business. Nobody could tell the story better than you can. Now, where entrepreneurs and small business owners get in trouble is they can't articulate their sales process that they intuitively know how to do and have been doing it from day one to salespeople. So the salesperson struggles, right? Because they've been doing discovery calls for so long, the, the entrepreneur, they know when Nick says X in the beginning, he's, I have to now say Y because I'm going to get an objection at the, at 36 minutes. in if I don't take care of that, you know, so there's a lot that the business owner just intuitively knows how to do on sales and marketing that they can't articulate. And we like to say that we translate, you know, founder speak to set to the sales team uh, or to the marketers, right? Because I think you have to be that, but uh, you got to be all three. Uh, but if you're a business owner and you're listening to this, you really got to be the marketer of the business, understand it, uh, and the chief salesperson of the business. And you could hire people, right? Because you want to exit and have a higher multiple. Well, it can't be you doing all of it, right? You have to have a team to do that. And if you want to scale your business, you got to get salespeople on the floor, you know, in some way, shape or form. Yeah. So one of the knocks of entrepreneurs is that they chase shiny. And so sure. uh, we all know somebody, I'm, I'm definitely guilty of this as well. It's yeah. hard to be yeah. grounded when your, your sense of curiosity can overwhelm you. And so a lot of our audience are entrepreneurs because that's, that was our audience in flipping books on Amazon. So a lot of them kind of came over with us, but our, our main goal with stacking habits is to present sort of wide ranging habits. So we don't just want to focus on business, although that's your expertise. We will certainly hone in on it. But what I want is for people listening to say, Hey, I'm not an entrepreneur. I don't identify as that. Um, but I think some of the struggles in terms of chasing shiny and trying to figure out what they want to do and sort of how to add some sort of a grounding or depth or intention, I think we can kind of sort of pull some of those threads out of this conversation. So one well, of the main things we, we oh, go, go ahead, Nick. No, go ahead, finish. And then I'll yeah, go. So one of, one of the things we, we sort of pulled on a little bit before was that idea of going deep. So we talked about reading multiple books and trying to pick uh, one specific topic and know more about that. So for you, how have you sort of, as you've looked at the entire world of business and marketing and sales, how have you sort of figured out where to hone in and focus your attention? First off, it's great. And, you know, I think going deep could be applied to anybody, right? So Cal Newport, right? Deep works, right? Or just going deep on, we're talking not only on the deep work, but also on the deep knowledge, right? And there's a great, I call it documentary, but it's probably loose. It's more of an infomercial, but I think it's called Bill's Brain, which is Bill Gates's brain. And it talks to him about his process, right? And he also has a picture of his library, which I kind of, you know, talk about, you know, guys want Rolexes and Lamborghinis and all that. I want that library, right? Yeah. That, you know, with all those books. But, um, you know, and it, it's just going deep on all the topics. So to answer your question, I started out, and you realizing, okay, you, as a business owner, you got to know sales and then marketing and marketing is human behavior. So then that takes you down a road of human behavior, right? And what is that? And, and back up one like? step real quick. You have right. to know sales first, because ultimately, if you don't have a customer, you don't have a business, right? You Correct. have to ha find a way to make money. Right. You got to figure out a way to get somebody that raises their hand to say, yes, I'm moderately interested in it to yes, I'm going to exchange money. Or if you're, you know, back in the older days, barter with you, right? I'm going to give you my goat for your, for your uh, ironsmith services. Um, you know, whatever that looks like, uh, you have to get that person to converge and say yes, and then do some level of exchange um, or trade, as you will, in the marketplace. So we can mm -hmm. take it down to its basics, right? So the beginning days, you know, it started with barter. I'm going to barter your my services. You see that a lot in construction today, right? You know, the, the guys that own um, the landscaping. You know, they have a phenomenal house, but they just, you know, they just bartered their services through. 
So you have to convert. So you have to have sales to say, get that person to say yes in some way, shape or form. And sales, quite frankly, some people that are listening may not be in business. So it's getting, I was just talking quite frankly to my cleaning crew that is here cleaning the house. And we're talking about her 15 year old boy, right? And so you got to sell him on the value of reading. You have to sell him on the value of being active and engaged in school to be an active citizen, right? It's the, you know, it's the teacher that has to sell the student about, you know, just being engaged, right? And doing the work. Um, and so sales is, is everything. It's the doctor that has to sell the new lifestyle to somebody that just got diagnosed with prostate cancer, right? Or, or cardiac, right? And now they have to kind of completely change everything that they need to do. And you have to convince them. Now, they may spring shot and say, yes, I'm going to do it, doc. And yes, 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 not a problem. But then it's going to go away, right? Because old habits die hard and that cheeseburger tastes so good, right? And the milkshake is phenomenal, but that's not good for us. So you have to converge them on sales. Then marketing, because you have to create demand, right? You have to create a market presence. You have to create a brand, if you will, right? And you have to get people to kind of raise their hand that want to do business with you, or at the very least learn more. So that way somebody in a sales role could take over and move them to yes. Uh, and then, you know, kind of go deep on different businesses and different, um, let's call seasons of business, right? So the, you know, what's it called? The turning point, right? The different seasons of business because business life cycles and business seasons all happen, right? History is history, right? We, we could, we could fool ourselves to say the tools are different, right? AI is different than maybe what happened in the seventies or the eighties, but the seasons of business will always be, there'll be booms and busts. There'll be generational, um, you know, changes of the business. And what does that mean to the marketplace? What does that mean to different things? Right. And so you have to know that and understand that. And I like to go deep on all that stuff. Love it. So An how another do you... really, really long answer to a short question. I apologize about that. Oh, these are great. It's obvious okay. you've been a podcast host in a, in a former <laughs> life. Um, so how do you decide? So I, I think when I define entrepreneur, um, there's, a, there's an element of creating, there's an element of taking on risk. But I think a big piece of being an entrepreneur is the elements of deciding because you can do anything, but you can't do everything. So as we talk about doing deep work or finding that subject to dive deep into, how do you how do you sort of figure that out? Is there a mathematical way? Is there something that you figured out with your decades of experience in terms of like we always preach startup, scale up and then find some way to systematize or step back? So the yeah. startup was just about going from zero to one. How do you get that first dollar? How do you create that first customer? Once you know that you can do that, then it's about trying to kind of systematically scale up. And so we try lots of different things. And some of the things found us when we were doing books, all of a sudden we had crazy number of new customers coming in the front end. And we're like, where on earth are these customers coming from? Turns out it was TikTok. And we had um, customers that just loved our app and started sharing. And that began probably 18 months of primarily Matthew saying, all right, this is working. Let's go dig in this vein of gold. And we started paying influencers. We started creating content. We started you know, doing advertisements. And that one thing that we started going deep in, which you know, a year ago, prior to that, of course, TikTok didn't exist. It came out of nowhere. But a year ago, if you had said, hey, your, your business model for marketing is going to be paying affiliates on TikTok, I would have laughed at you because that was just some sort of entertainment platform. And it turned out that was a very good thing for us to go deep in and learn about and make sure we figured out. So how do you, is, is that sort of something you just figure out like what's working and then go deeper? Or can you sort of systematically or strategically go after that? So I think it's yes and yes. And I think you said something key or, or you or Matthew asked the question of where are these people coming from? Sometimes we as business owners just are so caught up in the, in the on the treadmill that we don't ask that question. Where are our customers coming from? And it's not just where are our customers coming from, but where are our best customers coming from, right? Where are our most profitable customers coming from? Because I may want to have five to seven or eight to 20 different sources of customers, but not all sources are the same, right? So these are my top three and generate 80% of my business and are the most profitable. But there's somebody down here that only generates 10 customers a day or a year or a month for me, but they are 
micro profitable. They are hugely profitable, right? So they're my Slack adjuster. So I want to keep that, maybe try to find some others, but then keep keep on doing that. And so to answer your question, Caleb, somebody in your business or all of you guys in your business, you probably all were smart enough to ask that question, right? Where What's going on? And then now it's knowing the back end, right? Because if you would have just, you did that for your own business, did the math, and then went down the rabbit hole. Most business owners don't do that. And sometimes we don't know the back end of other people's businesses. So we say, oh, Nick is blowing it up on Facebook by selling, you know, a $39 something or other widget, right? But we don't know that he's got a back end that is 50 yards deep. And really his lifetime value is not $59. It's $3,000 by the time, you know, the time they get done nurturing and, and, and selling all different products and services. So know the back end of the business, know where it is. And really, second money is better than first money, right? So you, it's not just getting that first sale, it's getting that second sale and third sale and fourth sale from that customer. One is it's easier because you've already got that bond of trust if you've delivered what you said you're gonna deliver. And it's just easier because your acquisition cost is already baked in, right? So it's just going into it deeper and deeper and deeper and trying to figure it out. You know, some of it is dumb luck. Right. I think, you know, you like you, you stumble into it. You're like the, the habit oh, of luck. That's right. That's the habit of luck. Episode. Right. And some of the, but that is somebody might say, well, you're just doing stuff right. Or you're in the right place at the right time. So some of it is, you know, just the habit of luck. Right. And, you know, there's a lot of guys that are that thought MySpace was going to blow up. Right. And and Matthew has no idea what that reference is. But, you know, MySpace, you know, it, it didn't it didn't blow up. Right. So, you, you know, but but they were making that choice. And so. But, you know, there was early adopters to Facebook, right? And early adopters then to Reels and early adopters to TikTok. And, you know, I got a guy that that I follow that's in my space and he's like, you know, right now TikTok is blowing up for me, right? I know sales uh, trainers that, you know, are getting $25,000, $30,000 deals because of the fact that a younger salesperson saw their content on TikTok and then brought it to the VP of sales and says, I think we should have the conversation with this person, right? And so you, you don't ask that question, well, how did you find us, right? Or you, know, or you might, you know, your, your website person is going to say, well, it's all, you're all coming in from Google, right? Everybody, you know, everybody's coming in from Google. And I used to get that all the time in my agency. I was like, oh, you know, I, everything I get is coming in from online. Well, really, let's look at that, right? Oh, wait, look at on this month, we did a direct mail drop of, you know, 100,000 pieces and we saw that spike in online, you know, and, and then, you know, it became organic searches because of that, because people had, you know, so there's a lot of different things and we don't go deep enough on everything in life, right? One is we don't have time, right? So let's get ourselves some slack and grace and dignity, right? You know, we're busy, we're putting out fires and entrepreneurs, we're trying to be good husbands or wives or partners in some way, shape or form. Plus, you know, there's only 24 hours in a day. So it sounds like, oh, go ahead, sorry, but I was saying, it sounds like you're saying a lot of it starts with tracking because without that tracking, you'll never know what to go deep on. And so like Caleb's great at this is just developing systems for tracking. Cause once you start tracking effectively, then you'll actually know what to, to focus on in the first place. So it sounds like you've probably been pretty good in your businesses at tracking to know what to go deep on and what to spend that time on from the very beginning. Yes. And ask the question, right? And so I'll use one. Um, I want, we were working with a client, um, and we are looking at his source by um, by source of customers, right? Source of leads and how long leads were sitting in the pipeline, like kind of languishing in the pipeline and, and what moved through quicker. But the other thing I noticed was there was a biasness to geographical, right? And so now how do I maximize that, right? And it was, it was his messaging, right? Personal brand, right? So maybe his messaging didn't work on the East Coast as well as it did to middle of America or Texas or Denver or someplace else, right? And so you have to go deep, but then ask that question, right? Because it's easy to just say, okay, these are all the leads and the leads that are coming in from these sources are closing in, you know, 90 days and these are coming in, boom, 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 boom. But let's ask that other question and let's look at one more column and say, geographically, where are these leads coming from? Right. And is there a biasness and why is there a biasness? And does New York 
move through the pipeline faster, right? Or does the East Coast move through the pipeline faster, maybe so than the West Coast or the, the Southwest or something of that nature. And now I want to maximize that, right? Because I know if I spend $2 on a New York lead or $3 on a New York lead, I'm going to get the $3 back faster than in the Southwest, which is fine. I still need the Southwest and I need the West, but I need to kind of maneuver my money because it's arbitrage. Right. But arbitrage starts with data, right? Starts with knowing what's going on. Where am I at? And then there has to be that gut check, right? Which you guys are probably pretty good at, right? A lot of entrepreneurs kind of make it on the gut check too. Does this make sense? Right. Why is that? And I think that's going deep and reading and learning from a lot of broad different things because of the fact that it just opens up where you're at for so many different things because you look at the life so many different ways. Nick, one question I have for you, and I want to start asking our guests this. How would you define a habit? What does habit mean to you? I think it's habit is something that you either are programmed to do or have programmed yourself to do consistently over time. And it doesn't matter what, right? So a habit of going to the gym, well, you and I are in the Midwest right now. It would have been easy to say, I'm not going yesterday, right? Or I'm not going today because there's snow on the ground and it's going to be a pain and I don't want to do it, right? So a habit is something either you're, some people are programmed for it, right? Mm -hmm. They just have that self-discipline to do it, right? Some of it comes through schooling, through parenting, through sports or through education or some way, shape or form that they're just have that habit. And now the habit becomes a ritual and the ritual just gets repeated over and over and over and over again. I love it. I think there's definitely a level of habits being automatic. And the reason that matters is we're asking these questions. How do we carve out time to ask the, the business tough questions? How do we take time to step back and look at the bigger picture and try to figure out, okay, where are my customers coming from? How can I do better? How can I know that I should be investing in TikTok? And the, if the habits that you have, whether you're in business or not, sort of become second nature to you and then free up because like you said there's only 24 hours in a day there's only so much cognitive power that our brains can handle in a day and so if i'm thinking every day about how to run the very basic building block levels of my business i'm not going to be able to step back or step up and sort of understand better what's going on at a higher level so habits to me and i think you just hit on that exactly is it's what becomes automatic and then that allows us to build and build a better life and be able to climb higher and get perspective. I think a lot of it too is our is our operating systems, right? Is it is it hard baked in or do we have to, is it an app that we have to buy, right? Add to our operating systems and then get it to be hard baked. Uh, but yeah, you know, I was just thinking about, you know, what you guys found on TikTok, right? And you, know, how many other people in your space would never even have thought that? Right. It just, you know, now, it, you know, now they're second to the party, third to the party, fourth to the party. Well, forget it. Right. If you're not first, you're last, as Jack Welch taught us. Right. And so, you know, you really kind of have to go. Um, so it's just, you know, I, I, I wrote that down as a as a takeaway for me. So that, that was gold that you guys uh, shared. Well, again, we were lucky because it did hit us in the face. I think at that point we were getting let's call it 30 to 40 new customers a day in terms of trials. Wow. And all of a sudden we went from that to, you know, a day of like 80 or 100. And I think at our peak, when we really started turning the siphon on, we had days of, I don't remember, but probably four or 500, like absolutely off the charts. Matthew yeah. may remember better than I do. Yeah, we, yeah, I think one day was close to a thousand, which is the highest day we've ever had by far. But yeah, it, yeah, which it, is it just turned on like crazy, especially when that second, third, fourth video went viral all together at the same time. Yeah, it, it turned on fast. Yeah. So having, again, I'm a numbers right. guy. So I, you know, I probably, and this is actually a habit I've had to break myself of whether it was selling on Amazon or looking at our Stripe subscriptions or now pulling up on uh, Buzzsprout and looking at how many listens we have on the podcast. It's not going to do me any good to look at that eight times a day. Right. So what I've done for Buzzsprout now is I've actually forced myself to only look at it once a week. Mondays is my day to track and see where we're at. And if something blew up, awesome. We can look at it and figure out what happened. It will only be a week old. And so, you know, would I have gotten that same data if I had looked at our Stripe metrics, you know, once a week, probably, but we may not have jumped on it as fast as we did by going, hey, I know the rhythm of our company. I know where we typically stand and we're outside the bounds of, of normal right now. So what is going on? Can I ask a question or kind of challenge that a little bit? Yeah, um, please. If, if you... 
think of successful entrepreneurs, and I and I don't mean this in a negative way, right? Because 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 everybody struggles. I'm going to use the term obsessive compulsive, and I don't yeah, mean that. I knew in you were going to say way. the word obsess. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right, right, right. And, and so, but because you know, listen, everybody has struggles, and I'm I'm not making light of that. But but I I do want to say that there are things that we focus on, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say hyper focus on, and we want to check those all the way through, whether it's, and, you know, and I think that's a good thing, right? I think that's, it becomes, I don't want to say you become maniacal about it, right? Because then you be, you kind of lose balance, but I think that's a really good thing. And I remember I was, two, two points on that, Caleb. I was listening to Jim Cramer, right? And, you know, he does the Mad Money Bad Hour money, or whatever. Yeah. And he was talking, he was launching a book and he, just threw away the comment that he was at three o'clock in the morning, he was checking his Amazon sales and he had been tracking his Amazon sales vis-a-vis -vis other books at that time, right? I mean, this is, this guy, you know, it could buy every book on Amazon if he wanted to probably, right? But he became maniacal about that and hyper-focused about that. And I remember listening to Sarah uh, Blanksley, I think it is with, with um, you know, Spanx. Thanks. Yeah, Sarah Blanksley. And, and she, she changed my attitude about a lot of things, but she said, you know, I got into, and let's say it was Bloomingdale's, right? So I finally got Bloomingdale's to say yes to me. That was, she didn't stop there. She then went and created her own little media kits that, you know, and taught the people how to sell it and put up little, I mean, so she made sure that the products got sold. Some of us would just stop at, I got it into Bloomingdale's, done, check, let me go on to the next thing. But you become almost obsessive compulsive about saying, okay, now I got to make them successful. Now I got to make sure that they move my product so I stay in there forever because I'm just in there. It doesn't be doing any good. And if they all ship them all back, it doesn't do me any good. And so I think entrepreneurs or really, really great teachers, right? Because I know that you have a bunch of different listeners from all walks of life or really great doctors, really great doctors are obsessed, right? They're, 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 they're getting their continuing medical, medical education. Grand rounds are baked on that, right? Where they share a really interesting case and they learn from each other and they go deep and it's all based on data, right? And there's a lot of fake data right out there. And there's a lot of little, little fake gurus that are out there that are, you know, have done something in their dreams and now they're teaching people how to do that. <laughs> but, you know, I think you really, you really have to be about something, right? And you have to know how to turn it off, right? So if you're at a family dinner, right? Or if it's one of the kid's birthday party and you're obsessively checking your BuzzFeed numbers or something of that nature, that isn't gonna work. But you know, you, you kind of have to always be looking for that. Um, and you were talking about checking your BuzzFeed or Buzzsprout all the time. And that that's one thing that helps entrepreneurs. I think it does, right? And I and so so goes back to the to the my challenge to you, Caleb, which is really focusing on, you know, that you have to be obsessive, right? You have to be focusing on something. And, and it could be obsessive about numbers, which I'm, uh, you know, I listen, uh, math and finance is the numbers of business, right? So we need numbers to kind of understand where we are, because I think it grounds us. Um, I worked with a, a great entrepreneur by the name of Adam Witte, and he's like, facts and figures, right? We're not going to go with opinions. I want to know facts. And I think coming out of the private equity world, and I actually work you know, corporate America too, it's knowing your numbers. And I think the key is that uh, because, you know, you're sitting in, and you probably had it when you guys sold and sitting in the board meetings with a private equity guy, somebody was going to try to get you. Right. So you had to know your numbers and become obsessive about it. But I think you have to be tracking your key result indicators or key indicators, whatever that is, whatever that metrics is. And for some, it's just the basics of how many new leads did we bring in today and how many people did we close? Right. And now we can become now that's just basic. Right. And that's just if we use a basketball analogy, that's just doing layups. Right. But if you think about the greats, right. And I started writing on LinkedIn about the Mamba mentality because I read Kobe Bryant's book, The Mamba Mentality, and just his mindset and how he goes back to mentors, right. And how he got to people and asked those questions and, you know, learn from Michael Jordan, who was obsessive about everything. Right. So you have to, I think, be obsessive. Um, now you have to limit it, right? You know, th these guys knew when to turn it off. There's an off season, right? There's a season for everything. And I, and I, and I was, I don't know where we kind of stopped, but where I was saying is, well, you can't be checking the Buzzfeed numbers at the kids, you know, birthday party, 
right? Yeah. I think that's extreme. Now we all want to do it, right? Because it's easy. We like that. We're bored, you know, and well, so nice we kind of do hit. this, right? Right. So, but you have to be obsessive. And I think all the greats are obsessive about keeping score, about metrics, about improving on those metrics, because I think that makes you stale if you aren't that way. Um, and everything has to be in balance, right? And I'm sure there was points where my wife would say, listen, you were out of balance, right? And so you work on yourself and you work on, you know, getting that. But, you know, listen, we started out talking about, you know, habits and I used the analogy of the gym. Well, for some, it's just obsessive about getting there six times a week or seven times a week, right? Now it's about, okay, I did 20 minutes on on the treadmill at 3.2 and I moved it to 3.4 in my incline, incline or I'm doing weights, right? And I'm moving my weight up. Um, but I think it is. I think I think all the best are right, and uh, you know I think we we throw around great so much, right? Everybody, geez, if you go on on Instagram, everybody's a goat, right? I, you know, I got I got young entrepreneurs that haven't even made a hundred thousand dollars that are calling themselves the goat, right? And you know, and so let's put that in balance. But look at the really really greats, like the Kobe's, as we said about, like the Tom Brady's, right? I'm trying to not just use business analogies, yeah. but you know, I watched a phenomenal interview with Charlie Munger right before he, you know, before he passed away. So you think about a business, you know, and, and he went deep, right? He, he, and, you know, Warren Buffett said, you know, what made them the best is, you know, going deep on topics and reading and studying and knowing their numbers and asking the questions and, and, and knowing this is too big of a problem that I can't solve, or it's a business that we just don't understand. So I'm not going to get in it. Right. And I think saying no is important too, as, as, as an entrepreneur, right. As a business owner, mm -hmm. as anybody, right. Just saying no. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate your challenge and I'm going to pull a Nick line on you. I'm going to say yes. And yes, I think you're absolutely right. But I would argue that without the foundation of habits to get you to the point where you're able to take that time to obsess over the things that really matter, then it, it's kind of a moot point. Because if you're still trying to figure out where your next meal is coming from or where rent money is coming from, you don't have the luxury to step back and say, hey, what are the most important metrics that I should be tracking and what can I obsess over? And that is a, that is a luxury that I think habits can afford you because they allow you to get so much done unconsciously that you can then spend your precious mental processing power doing the things that will actually um, you know, have massive breakthroughs. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, those you know, my heart goes out to those folks, right? Of and listen, as entrepreneurs, you know, we've all been to that. It's like, oh crud, payrolls due, right? I got to get that, right? I used to joke in my, you know, our, my first business, it was the Thursday night sweats, you know, because payroll was on Friday, right? And, and you know, so it's just like, okay, what's coming in those in those days? You know, it was what's coming in, what checks are coming in. Now everything's immediate. But I hear you, yeah, and I agree, right? And, you know, for that person, they need to be obsessive about getting their next customer, right? Their next sale, right? And it's becoming better doing the reps on the sales process, getting leads in, having the intestinal fortitude to do the hard work of picking up the phone and calling people or knocking on doors if you're a Main Street business or whatever it is to get people into the fold. That's the most, you know, that's be what you have to become obsessive about. Yeah. I grew up in a leaderboard Biz, you know, like I wanted to be top of the leaderboard, right? As a salesperson. So I became obsessed with what are the greats that are there doing, right? And how are they winning? And how can I emulate that? And now how can I make that my own? And then when I, you know, had a business and, you know, it's like, okay, and it was a franchise, one of my businesses. And so how can I be president's club, right? Because they had a president's club. So what does that look like and how can I get there? And there's a little bit of knowing the metrics so you could kind of game the metrics a mm -hmm. little bit, right? It's, you know, and not to your detriment, but you, 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 you have a competitive drive, that habit of trying to be the best. Now, things maybe got pushed aside, right? Was I 100% in my health? No. Right. You know, I'm spending time on the road, you know, making sales calls. So I'm at McDonald's, right? Because it was free refi. Well, you're in McDonald's. You got to, you know, you'd be rude not to get, you know, a Big Mac or something or Dunkin' Donuts. Well, you got to get, you know, you got to get two and a, and a coffee with cream, you know. So, you know, you, you have to balance that, right? And, 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 you know, kind of look at everything. Yeah. So what are you obsessing over now, Nick, at the, you know, you've done so many things in your career and you've, you've yeah. obviously gone deep on a lot of different subjects. What uh, either it could be, what are you hoping to obsess over in 2024 or what have you spent time obsessing about lately? So 
I a couple things. One is I think I think business is gonna there's gonna be businesses out there that are really gonna catapult themselves. And there's a lot of zombie companies out there, right? And and so I'm obsessing about can I find some some of those companies and maybe acquire them or acquire the assets of those companies and build those up. Um, I am obsessing of saying, okay, I've worked in the PE environment, right? I've done a, an exit, but it was you know small. So can I do one for a couple more zeros? And that's where I really want to build my company, add value to the marketplace. Where can I add value to the marketplace uh, and see what does this look like on a one-year run, two-year run, five-year run, and seven-year run? I have the luxury of we've put our kids through college, right? You know, I I don't have to worry about that, that some people do. So now it's like, okay, how can I really add this? I enjoy the teaching aspect. That's why I love doing these podcasts. Hopefully I added value to to your listeners along the way. Um, And I did some teaching in, in, in in the graduate level at a university. I don't know if I'll do that right now. There's just so much stuff going on in that environment, but I want to give back and teach, right? So I'm becoming obsessive about being a better educator and communicator and moving that through. So the first thing is business. You know, second thing, you're growing my business, acquiring businesses, moving this to the next level to see what my exit looks like. Being a better communicator and educator is the second thing I'm obsessing about or going deep on. And then the third thing is we've talked a lot about it, you know, health. I'm not not as young as the two of you guys, but, you know, kind of getting that back in play. Right. And and really, that's one thing I get obsessed about. You know, you get the app, you get obsessed about, you know, what's my calories in, what's my fiber, yeah. where am I at and all that. So it gives you a scoreboard. And I think the gamification of it is and really going deep because I think sometimes business owners, entrepreneurs, we put that aside and we shouldn't. And I'm, you know, I hold the mirror up, right? I'm not pointing the finger. I'm holding the four fingers are back at me. I did that on, uh, on two of my runs. I'm not going to do it this time because it's great for the mental health too, right? It's a great stress release, right? So that's, those are the three things. I love it. And, and how- upgrading my internet. Those are like the fourth thing, right? <laughs> how, how did you pick those? So practically speaking, again, our podcast is about how do we cast a wide net yeah. and just build this habit menu of just interesting habits uh, from high performers and people having a, a tremendous impact. But we also then want to get extremely practical. So mm-hmm. how did you arrive at those three things and, and four with the internet? But was there some sort of, do you, do you have like a routine where you sit down once a year, once a quarter and sort of ask yourself some questions? What does what that actual process look like? Great question. Uh, and yes, and yes, as, as yes. I get to quote myself. <laughs> so um, I do an end of the year question that I have, I've kind of, I actually got this from Tony Robbins, I think in the nineties. Right. And, you know, and it was, he sent out a cassette tape and Matthew doesn't even know what that is. Right. But, you know, <laughs> we, 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 you know, but, but, you know, I, he, he's, here's a cassette tape. I was probably on his membership. Right. And these, he goes, these are my end of the year questions. Well, so now I've gathered those and added to them. And now I've moved it to, we do, I do a big one. And then my wife and I review the year. Right. So we view, we review our year. What do we do? What, what, what went well? What didn't went well? Travel, all that good stuff. And then from there, I figure out where I want to go. And then I ask myself those questions quarterly because I think monthly you're too much in the think of things. So you have to kind of step mm-hmm. back and look at, at it. And so if I could add your the second part of your question is how did you get to those three? Well, the third one, which was health, I didn't do well right? In, at certain points of my life and my career. And I've realized one is the importance of it. And two is when I study high performers, they all made that investment, right? A high performing entrepreneur made that investment. They really focus on it. There's phenomenal, you know, it's phenomenal enhancements of your sleep when you're working out hard, right? And that's, I think that really sets us apart. Um, I think there's mental health aspects of things where it really, 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 really enhances your ability, your cognitive ability to stay focused, right? Plus, you know, I'm learning because I'm listening to audiobooks. I'm listening to podcasts like this, which right, what everybody should listen to, right? So I'm, you know, I'm kind of double dipping, if you will. Um, and then the second one is just being a better communicator and teacher. I think it's what I love, right? I grew up in a house. My mom was a teacher. My sister's a teacher. I taught and I loved it. I had that opportunity to speak and teach as, when I was at GKC Magnetic Marketing. And it's really part of my core. And so I love it, right? And so it gives me energy. And so I want to do that. Plus, I learned this, I think, as a throwaway from Bill Glazer. When you become the teacher, you become better at it, right? Because you have to study at it. 
you have to just go deeper on it. So that's what I do. Um, and then the third, the first one, which is, you know, just kind of growing the business and then the acquisition, you know, it's, it's kind of in my DNA, right? You know, always thinking about business with the next one or, okay, how did, how did that business get in place? And, you know, even something as simple as we looked at a dog walking business, right? You know, it's just, you know, I think, you know, people will continue to spend on their pets, probably more so than their children, if you have pets, right? And children, right? So what are markets and demographics and where can you go after them? And, you know, really, you know, there's some really good assets out there and there's some businesses that are just tired, right? They just, you know, they've gotten through the COVID pandemic, they're ready. The, the kids don't want to take over the business, right? So they're looking to get out of them. And so, you know, we're looking at them, as you know, whenever you look at businesses, you got to kiss a lot of frogs, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you got to figure out, you know, sign a lot of NDAs, do a lot of conversations and, you know, well, we'll at the end of the year, we'll check in. Will I have a bought one? Who knows, right? But I'm going to focus on growing this business too, because it's really, really fun. Um, and it kind of checks all the boxes for me also. Well, I like that. Nick, you're clearly a student of life. You're very curious. And I love hearing all the references that you've mentioned. I think one thing that, that gets overlooked with habits is it's really easy to imitate others. Well, I shouldn't say easy, but it's very, it's very doable and practical. And so that's one reason we want to bring so many just wide ranging people on the podcast. Um, because if you see someone else doing something, there's a kind of an old phrase that says, see one, do one, teach one. You're obviously great with words. You're a great communicator, great teacher. Um, but if you can see somebody else sort of pave the way, and for you, that was Dan Kennedy and all these other names that you've been referencing throughout, um, you've done a good job kind of hitching your wagon to theirs and pulling out great questions from Tony Robbins and applying those, you know, decades later. And so that speaks testaments, just being able to take that knowledge and then put it into practice in your own life. And that is going to continue to pay dividends. Yeah, but I think, you know, and thank you first, but what you guys are doing are phenomenal. Well, first off, congratulations on your exit, right? The, you know, what percentage of, of entrepreneurs get to that point? You can you know, take a hat, do a victory. I mean, that's allowed you guys to do some really cool stuff, but you know, that's a huge feather and, and I'm so impressed. My, my, you know, I, I you know, I, you're, you're on my board of goats, right? Because of that. And I don't <laughs> use that lightly because that Baby goats. really, that's really, really, really phenomenal. And two is, you know, I love your concept of your podcast, right? That's that's cerebral, what you guys are doing of saying, I just don't want the guy on or gal on and, and have them do their stump speech or talk about their book or, you know, let's, what are you passionate about? Go deep on something. And it, hopefully we, I added value and, I, you know, the, the podcast of, that I listen to, you know, there's great nuggets that you get in. And that's why in this generation where we're at, the access to really, really, really good information is phenomenal, right? Really. And, and, you know, shame on anybody that doesn't take advantage of it. Right. And, you know, we just, you know, and, and I learned something from Matthew and you with the, with the, you know, the TikTok, right. And just, okay. And then going after the influencers now then, and going after and buying the ads and all that. So, you know, to me, you know, every exchange is an exchange that could be positive or negative. And this one was definitely positive for me. And hopefully it was for you guys and for your audience. Looking at all those books behind you and hearing about just all the, the books you've read and you seem to be a very well-read person. If you had someone in a nine to five right now approach you and say, what three books should I read if I want to start my own business? What three books that you have sitting on the shelf behind you would you recommend to someone wanting to get out and start a business of their own? So the, fir the first three that I would have them do is I would have them read Dan Kennedy's uh, sales letter, right? Uh, how to, you know, the ultimate guide to creating a sales letter. I'd have them read um, uh, persuasion or pre-persuasion, but that's pretty esoteric, right? So they kind of have to understand that. But I think that's a good one on the marketing side. Dan's going to be tactical, right? Boom, 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 boom. How to write that sales letter, Robert. Uh, you know, um, see, I always get his name wrong, but a persuasion or um, pre-persuasion focus on how to get people to say yes, right? He's got another book that's called Yes, right? Which is the scientific way to get people to have yes. Uh, and then on the sales side, they, there's, some, there's so many good ones. I mean, I think they have to be schooled and go to Zig if they haven't, right? So you go back old school of reading Zig. I'm just a huge fan, right, of what he's done. 
Uh, but, you know, he doesn't mesh with everybody. And some people are like a little bit old, but, you know, Seth Gooden still references Zig Ziglar, right? Mm-hmm. So come on. Um, and so go with him or go with, you know, somebody else uh, on the sales side, but somebody that teaches you the sales process, right? And, you know, realizing that objections are just part of the sales process and don't get uh, befuddled by those. So those would be the three. If you want to go deep on three different topics, right? So marketing, you know, or copywriting, I think, you know, really understand it. You know, you probably are just intuitive about really getting great on on words, right? And using the right words to get people to yes, right? And so what's a great headline? What's a great body copy, right? You know, then I'd go David Ogilvy, right? And, you know, his confessions of an advertising man still to this day of how he set up an ad, you know, still used by everybody, right? So those are- I don't are- think I've read the Persuasion book before. You said, who was that by? Would you- the author uh, of the persuasion maybe i have read it, it didn't sound familiar it. though pre pers- oh persuasion okay yeah robert okay i need to read that i don't think i've actually ever read that book have you read and that Caleb? i've not and yes right he's got one i, I don't want to keep on getting up because this is the podcast but it's called yes right and it's and an influence right so you probably read influence or everybody's yeah. read influence and then yes and then pre-persuasion or persuasion uh, those are the good ones, you know, I, and you, then you go deep on persuasion, right? There's some good stuff on that. Um, it's a black and white book and I forget the author's name, uh, but it's, it, it's really good on the, on the, so, uh, it's power and force, uh, and that's power more on persuasion, force. power and force. Awesome. Well, thank you for those recommendations. Got a new book to add to the list. Well, you guys probably have like eight thousand books in your uh, in your uh, storage. We sold over well, eight thousand books. Well, I stole <laughs> I stole a line from uh, Ramit Sethi, who oh, one yeah. of his personal rules is as soon as he hears about a book, he just buys it. And so yeah. I'm guilty of that. My my inflow of books that I need to read or want to read. I'm trying to remove the words need and should from my vocabulary this year, but that just keeps ever growing. And after our conversation last time, Nick, I've I've actually picked up two old books that I've read before, I don't go back and reread books very often. So one is going to be Atomic Habits, which of course fits into this podcast. And the other that's probably been the most influential on my life is The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papazan. Um, And you talk about playing offense. It's so easy to chase shiny. And one of the things that he taught me in the book, at least the big takeaway for me, was to block out four hours a day and turn my phone on Do Not Disturb, don't check email, close all the distractions, and simply focus in on whatever the one or two, he he would just say one thing, but pick one thing that's the most leveraged thing you can do, even if that's one hour a day. If you can allocate one hour to playing offense and doing the most valuable thing for your business, for your life, for you as a parent, whatever, whatever you're trying to expand in, then that is going to pay just massive dividends. And so I'm going to go reread that book because I'm a different person than I was five or six years ago when I first read it. And I'm excited to see what I'll pick up the second time around. You know, it's interesting. I'm, I'm ashamed that I didn't read that book, right? I just read it uh, in December. Um, and it was one that always got referenced. Um, and I, you know, listened to it on Audible, uh, but phenomenal. And I agree with you. And I loved his line where he said, I went and fired myself, right? And then just focused on building up team members. And, you know, you want to talk about scale, you know, it's building the team, right? And I, and you don't realize that when you're growing a business because you're kind of in the fight of it. But the one thing I didn't realize is how important culture is, right? And how important building team people are and building them up and setting clear objectives, right? And, you know, scorecards and data and stuff like that. And and I think any operating procedure that you could create, uh, you know, for that business, so the business runs um, and it's based on facts and moving things. And what's the one thing? I think, you know, Gino Wickman, they do some good things. Okay. These are the four big things or three big things. You want me to do the fifth one. What are we going to take off? Right? Because then we just keep piling on to people and we force people to shut down. Thanks so much, Nick. And I saw you yeah. take a note during the podcast, even on the TikTok thing. So yeah. I would encourage you if you're listening to this and something stood out, don't just let it rattle around in your head and not find a resting place. Take a second, jot that down, make an audio note to yourself. And I promise that future you will be glad that you did. And with that, that is episode 13 of Stacking Habits. Tune in next week and see what other mystery guests we bring on. Thanks.